Okay, so today I'm doing something a little bit different than I normally do. I usually am showing you guys some pretty quick, easy strokes today. I'm going to show you how to blend some colors a little bit. So I'm doing some real pretty little eucalyptus leaves. So let me pick out the colors I want to use. I think I'm going to go with, by the way, I'm using a Velvet Touch number eight Princeton round brush. My absolute favorite. I even love the feel of these brushes. Um, and my palette is by Miss Ceramics. You guys have asked me that. These are all custom made little palettes I have. So today I'm going to use Prussian Blue by Windsor Newton. Again, I have said this in other videos. Be careful when using this color because it can be really, really um, pretty saturating. But it's a beautiful color, especially, I think, with uh, leaves and things. And then I'm going to use my sap green. So you can tell this palette's new because see how it's resisting the paint a little bit? <laughs> so I'm going to use a lot of that green. So let me get a lot of that on there. And then I'm going to use... This yellow, I think it's called gold yellow. Get some of that. As you can see, it's getting some green in it. I need to get some more in there, actually. I'm almost out. Okay. So that's pretty good. And then I'm just going to use a tiny bit of this uh, pinkish color. That's a little bit deeper. I really like Opera Rose, which is a beautiful, beautiful color. If you don't have that color in your watercolors, you need to. It's gorgeous, especially mixed with like orange or yellow in flowers. It's beautiful. So we're just using a tiny bit of that. So I'm not gonna put a whole lot on my palette there. So Opera Rose, Prussian Blue, Sap Green, and that's Gold Yellow, I think. These are all Windsor Newton. Pretty much use the same paint, same brushes. Okay, so let's just start here. Um, let me get my napkin, sorry for my arm there. Okay, so I kind of drew out these eucalyptus leaves a little bit, and then let's just see what I can do here with them. So I'm going to start with that top one, and I'm just putting in a light wash of this green color. Remember, you want to keep it pretty wet. You want the color to move around really easily. And now I'm going to go in with a tiny bit of that upper rows and just dot it in the top there. Now I've got quite a bit of water here, a little bit more than really I would like, so I'm just going to soak up a little bit of that. Kind of move it around. And then I'm going to add this green in the bottom here. Now I didn't practice this, so I'm kind of doing this as I'm on the video with you. Again, I'm using cold pressed paper, 140 pound. I'm going to touch it just with a tiny bit of that blue. Now see, that was the tiniest bit of that blue and look at how that really spread. That's how strong that Prussian blue is. It's really, really a bright color, very saturated color. So let's just leave that and kind of go on to another leave. Again, this isn't really my typical style of painting. I'm not really a dabber, so to speak. I'm kind of a 
one and done type of gal. I like to kind of do one stroke petals. It's kind of my jam. So I'm gonna go in with a tiny bit of that pink again. I just think this pink is so beautiful. I wish I could use it more. So isn't that pretty how it's all mixing? And then I'm just barely dabbing in. It doesn't take much for that blue in the bottom there. Maybe a tiny bit up here. I'm kind of feeling like I want a little bit of a blue green. See if we can make another. That blue is just so saturating. I'm gonna try a little bit of olive green as well. One second. See what that does. So let's go into, I don't wanna go into a leaf that's right next to each other because they will just blend into one, one piece. So just dragging that down a little, I'm gonna go in at the base of that. Just put in a little bit of my blue. Isn't that beautiful? This is where I do really enjoy watercolors. I just think they're so pretty the way they blend together. Put in a little bit of that pink. So pretty. Let's do this one. Being careful not to touch the, that one because otherwise they'll just run together, which isn't always bad. And then I'm going to dab in some of my dark green. So you're just really in watercolors, you're kind of just playing. Have fun with it. I'm working fairly wet. As you can see, it's kind of shiny and the colors are moving around. I like that. And then I'm just going in at the edges. and dabbing in some color and letting it kind of do its thing. Sometimes I'll blow because it kind of gives it some movement. And then I'm gonna go in with that pink at the tips of the leaves. So I'm kind of liking how that looks. Now this one again had a lot of water, so I'm just gonna remove some of that. There you go. Maybe put in a tiny bit of pink on this one. Now that was getting a little dry, so it didn't blend as much as I might have liked. And then I'm gonna use this blue. And let's do this leaf in the back. It's in the back, so I'm thinking it might be a little bit bluer because it's in the shadows. And then I'm gonna add some of my green. Again, this really isn't my normal style of painting. Kind of dabbing like this. but sometimes it's kind of fun. And it makes me slow down a little bit, right? But I, I really paint you guys to have fun. So I hope you guys do too. I hope you try this and put your own spin on these things. 
And then let's just move down to this leaf here. Choose this green. Now this, it came out much more opaque because I didn't have as much water. So just because of the less water, it's going to look a little bit darker. I need a little bit more of that yellow here. Just kind of go in there, kind of dab around. Just really, you know, with watercolors, you can just really kind of let them do their own thing, honestly. I do like to play with drying my drying my brush and then wiping parts off. Kind of play with that. Look at how that makes the leaf kind of turn and move. And I'm going to go in before this dries too much and I'm just going to use a little bit of brown part in my arm for the stem. Let's add a little bit of green in there. And I want it to be a little bit wet because I like it when it kind of blends with the leaves. Just like that. See, it kind of blends in. Isn't that beautiful? That's what we really want in watercolors. We want that beautiful bleed and blend. That's what's so beautiful in watercolors. So I'm going to go ahead and try this leaf here, and I think I'll make it maybe a darker green. So we're going to combine that sap green, and I'm just going to put a little bit of this brown in there. I can get that color to make it a little darker green, which really isn't typical of these leaves. They're usually blues and browns, but I wanted to do something different here. Okay, and if you notice too, I like to leave white space. Um, I think that creates a lot of interest and I'm actually really happy with that leaf. I think I'm just gonna leave it how it is. I might add a tiny bit of blue just in the bottom here and then I'm going to do the leaf this I'm sorry the stem because it's wet and I want it to blend just like that and I'm going to there we go Okay, so let's do this leaf back here. And because I'm making, I'm using, I, I share this a lot. Because I'm using a lot less water on this leaf and it's lighter, it's going to look like it's pushed back a little farther. So that's playing with the values of the paint. More water, it's going to be less pigment and when you use that on a leaf, it's going to push the leaf backwards. It's gonna look like it's in the background. And let's just, again, let's use a little bit of that blue. Okay, maybe put a tiny bit of pink at the tip really liking that opera rose. I love that color. It's one of my favorites. And this one's in the back, so I'm going to make use a little bit of blue with that one. And that is my Prussian blue I'm using. Now I'm going to add a little bit more water so it isn't quite as intense. 
But as you see, that is a lot of water and look at how intense that color is still. That Prussian blue is really, really intense. So I wanna darken that up because I want it to look like it's in the background. So I'm gonna add quite a bit of green to it. Just like that. And then let's go back in and get that stem in there because if I do that while it's wet, it's going to have this wonderful bleed. Isn't that beautiful? So this was an interesting little leaf I did. That one is kind of curled, like so. So I thought that might be kind of fun. And then I think I'm gonna do the other side of it like this. Let's see what this looks like. Kind of not liking that so much. Turned out a little bit yellower than I like, so I'm gonna add a tiny bit of green to that. There we go, like that a little bit better. Try and remove some of that. There you go. Yeah. But darken that, this lip right here. Yeah, that's okay. I'll probably play with it after I'm done with this video. Not really liking the sharp edges there. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, so let's do that. Here's another stem. And then we have this one leaf left here. Isn't that gorgeous? That could be framed. And really, you guys, I'm just playing with colors. Like, play with your values. Play with your hues. Doing a larger, you know, more water and seeing that lightness. And then more pigment and see what that looks like. Let's make this one down here really light. So let me water this down quite a bit. And let's see what we can do with that. So again, I'm using that brush. I'm getting that point, pushing down to open up the barrel and get the wider stroke. and then I pick it up to get that tip. So that kind of, I'm hoping, looks like it's set back a little bit more. Let's maybe add a little bit of color down here, or maybe even up here at the end, that's pretty. So I'm actually kind of liking this eucalyptus. I think it's kind of pretty. What do you think? So I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Always leave some white, I think, in your paintings. I teach this in my classes. If you ever come to a class, leave white space because that creates some interest. And then use the values. More pigment is going to make the color darker and it's going to make it pop out. A lighter pigment, more water is going to make it fade back. So you have this close up and far away thing going on. And then play with the water usage. So you get these beautiful blending of colors, you might get some of these blooms. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, again, I use as often as I can Princeton Velvet Touch Brushes. This is an eight round. And this is just a little sketchbook I have. It's 140 pound, cold press. I believe it's Strathmore and my Windsor Newton paints. Okay, thank you so much for watching.